Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your channeled message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I do hope you're all doing well, feeling safe and feeling blessed because you are. So for the channeled message reading, it does not matter what your zodiac sign is. Absolutely anyone may resonate with this message. I just ask that you use discernment to take what resonates and leave what does not. Remember that the cards represents energies that any gender can embody, okay? So let's get started. Oops. I think that's the candle. I just lit a candle. All right. <laughs> Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. What is the message? What is the message for someone out there? Well, maybe if I can stop shuffling it backwards. All right, Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords. Tell us more about this message. Four of Cups. Five of Swords. Oh, wow. Four of Wands. Hmm. Tell us more about this message. Two of Cups. Let me see. Five of Wands. Queen of Cups. I feel like someone here has just been wanting some clarity and confirmation from you that they are the one that you want, okay? Like someone here wants to know that you have chosen them. They want to know that you also know that they are the one. They know that you are the one, but they want to know if you know that they are the one for you. Okay, the Ace of Swords is a big communication card. It represents clarity, it represents truths, something here being revealed. You know, the Four of Cups is re it's rejection or it's dissatisfaction and unfulfillment. This person is very fearful of being rejected by you because they want you. You're like their dream person, you know, and they wouldn't be able to handle the rejection. So it's one of those things where I feel like they they wanted you to say something first or initiate something or tell them something, you know. Um, you just mean too much to this person for them to even think about you not wanting them. So it's one of those things where if they can just love you from afar and not risk being rejected by you, that's what they would do. <laughs> that's what they would do, you know? There's so much fear revolving around you rejecting them, so they're like, let me not ever even, you know, let that ever happen, you know? And just love them from a distance so that the rejection could never happen. But I feel like there's something that you've said or done that has given this person a whole lot of confirmation and clarity on how you feel. The Five of Swords is unresolved conflict here. Like something being left unsaid is what it feels like with this Five of Swords. Sometimes it could represent just, you know, surrendering and accepting defeat. Clarify the Five of Swords. I feel like something here was unresolved as in nothing was said. Okay, things were felt, but nothing was vocalized. And the Queen of Swords is an excellent communicator. So I, I feel like you've said something, you've spoken the truth here. That, like, there's something that you've said, okay? Queen of Swords is all about communication, wisdom, knowledge. And look, Eight of Wands is a big communication card. A big communication card. So... I don't know if you said something to this individual, like face to face, if you wrote them something, sent them something, or if you even did it telepathically. Look at the Eight of Wands. They've received some sort of communication from you. What was that? The High Priestess. Oh my gosh. 
It was a spiritual communication though. So you guys are some powerful soulmates. This is not like an average connection, right? A typical connection. This is like, you can telepathically communicate with this person. Are you aware of that? Whoa, whoa, that's amazing, cool. <laughs> That is amazing. Wow. <laughs> you can telepathically communicate with them. I like that's like a clear. I'm seeing it happen right now. It's like I'm seeing something flowing in the air, but I can't explain it. I, I don't know the science behind it or the words to explain what I'm seeing, but you guys can telepathically communicate. And I feel like, I feel like there's something that you said to this person. You know, you sent some sort of message to this person. There's, there's a telepathic communication, absolutely. That's what that Eight of Wands was that was on the back of the deck. And then the high priestess is all about spirituality. The high priestess represents someone who's very spiritual or even spiritually gifted. These are people who can be empaths, intuitives, clairvoyants, your prophets, your seers, clairaudient, right? Clairsentience, like spiritually gifted people. You can telepathically communicate with this person. I see it so clearly. This person likes you so much that they wouldn't dare like do something to make you reject them because it would just break them. Like it would break their dreams, their hope of being with you. It would just devastate them. So they're like, let me just stay to the side. Like, let me just stay over here and love them from a distance. Because if this person rejects me, I will not be able to handle it. But what they don't know is you love them. The feelings are mutual. It's just the both of you are nervous, right? But the divine's trying to help you guys out here. Where the divine is like, if the two of you are too nervous to say something, you can telepathically talk to this person like if you can't stand there and look at them face to face and tell them I love you or I'm interested in you I want us to move things forward you can do it in the comfort of your own like <laughs> you know go to your room or something and you can talk to this person they'll hear it they will be on the receiving end of it there's something here where there's this person can receive communication from you but non-verbally Tell us more about this. This is cool. This is so cool. Knight of Swords. Okay, Knight of Swords. Let me see how I can understand this. Knight of Wands. I hope you're ready because this person's about to pursue you like never before. <laughs> we have two knights. Knights are all about action. The Knight of Swords is a swift action taker. The Knight of Wands is a passionate action taker. They're going to be taking, they're going to they're going to be taking action towards you in so many ways, using their sword and using their wand. So the Knight of Wands is someone who flirts. They do a whole lot of flirting and they're very charming and attractive, sexy, you know, passionate. The Knight of Wands is someone who's like fleeing. Like this is someone who moves, like this is someone who's hasty. They move very fast and passionate. And so is the Knight of Swords, a swift action taker who seizes opportunities immediately because they've received some sort of communication from you with the Page of Wands. All you have to do, I feel like all you have to do is focus on them. 
I'm hearing it works when you are like balanced, like when you are at peace, like temperance, think of temperance, peace, calmness, and harmony with yourself. When you have, when you have inner peace, you can communicate with this person. Like when you're well balanced, you're content, and it's like you just envision them there and just talk to them, like picture them there and talk to them. They receive, this is like some, how do you call this? Extraordinary, <laughs> supernatural, superpower. Like <laughs> this is so cool and so cute, but I'm trying to see like, because you may not even know that you have this gift, that the two of you have this gift. You guys are an extraordinary soulmate. This is like, this is cool. This is awesome. Um, but I keep on hearing when you temperance yourself, when you're at peace and you're centering yourself, especially if you have a lot of inner peace, that's when it really works. That's when you can really like, you may even be able to feel it. That inner peace, it may actually, maybe it has an effect on your gifts too. Like when you are at peace with yourself, you feel much better, you know, your gifts enhance. And you can talk to this person. You can do it. Like I'm seeing it. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, and look, the page of wands, pages are all about communication and messages and page of wands specifically represents good news. Oh my gosh, that is super cool. That is amazing. <laughs> That's, look, the judgment. Like, all you had to do was tell this person that you want them. The judgment is a final decision that you've made to let them know. And look at the two wands carrying out a plan, trying to get a sense of direction here. You've made it clear to the universe as well that this is who you want to be with. Oh my gosh. King of Cups. And they came out. They came out. The King of Cups is someone who has very deep feelings and emotions for you. They've just been waiting to love you, but they've been waiting for a sign first. Because this person doesn't want to risk getting rejected. You know, nobody does. Clarify the Four of Wands. Four of Wands is a commitment, successful partnerships, soulmate connections. But you see, nobody was really making a decision with the Two of Swords, which literally represents indecision. And sometimes you can say, okay, I want someone, you know, or I want this and I want that, but unless you put all your heart and might into it, it won't happen. And that's what's, that's the kind of situation here. You needed to really make up your mind and put all of your heart, mind, and soul into this decision. Wow. King of Swords. Yeah, your heart, mind, and soul. The King of Swords is someone who has intellectual powers. When you think, things move. When you speak, things happen. It's just the power of the mind. You don't have to tire yourself out by doing too much talking or too much action. It's just the power of the mind. That's where your gift heavily lies. You have intellectual powers. Like imagine the wheel of fortune. You can turn that wheel just by using your mind. The strength of the mind, the power of the mind. Oh my gosh. That's one of your gifts. That's why you can telepathically communicate. Duh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it makes sense. You have gifts, but unless you really become in tune, you may not know what gifts you have. Some of you, and that's why I encourage you guys to really, 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 you know, be prayerful and pray and meditate. Meditation does wonders. And then you combine it with prayer. Oh my gosh, you're going to be so tapped in. And I've experienced that myself, prayer and meditation. My goodness, like do it before you go to bed or in the morning or set an alarm or during the day. It doesn't even have to be something long, you know, to just stay in tuned spiritually, tapped in, stay tapped in. You have intellectual power, you have gifts, but unless you're tapped in, you won't know it. You won't be able to, I feel like it's one of those things where you've already accessed your gifts and now it's time to activate them, to use them, right? <laughs> use them, you've already accessed it, but now you have to activate it. How do you activate it? Do you want, like, do you wanna know how to use your gifts? You got to start praying and meditating. Practicing your gifts so that you can get more skilled at using it. That's what it is. You have all of the gifts, the tools and resources to manifest, to produce for yourself what you want. That's what the divine wants you to know. He has given you, you're like the magician. You have those magical powers to get the work done. Look, oh my gosh, the Empress, the Empress gives birth to creations. The Empress can produce not just a child, but like produce what she wants, her cre like her creations. The Empress is blessed with fertility, the gift of fertility. So when a person is fertile, they can grow, they can expand, they can produce, they can give birth. You can manifest just by using your mind. What do you want? And let your mind do the work. The power lies in your mind. Oh my gosh. That's your gift or one of your gifts. Like I said, things happen just by you thinking. Like when you think something, things happen. That's powerful. You don't have to do much talking, <laughs> you know? And truly by character, the King of Swords, these are the characteristics of the King of Swords. They are very detached. They're able to stand on the outside and look into the situation in order to make the best decisions for all. You know, these are people who know how to put their feelings and emotions aside to make the best decision for everyone. The King of Swords is serious minded, intelligent. This is an intellectual analytical, highly skilled, multi-skilled, multifaceted, I would say, brainy, you know, these are even people, they have their careers, they have a very high esteemed uh, profession, very intelligent people. All they got to do is just use their mind. And the king of swords, they don't talk too much, but when they do talk, they keep it short and sweet. These are people who are very blunt and to the point. They're very frank, very straightforward, and very bold. They're very, like, they, they carry that sword. They're sharp. They say it like it is, and they keep it pushing. You'll never really catch a king of swords arguing or going back and forth. No, they stay focused. Very confident and secure people. And again, look, the ace of swords. You speak, okay, there's this thing that you do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, there's this, uh, okay. 
okay, I don't wanna like put your business out there, but then again, nobody knows who you are, right? Nobody knows who you are. Um, there's this thing that you do. <sighs> oh my freaking gosh, okay. Listen, there are some people who are just like highly evolved individuals. So when you look at them, they look like you and I, like they look like regular human beings, but they're not. They're more evolved, especially on a spiritual level. And maybe even physically, they're able to do things that most people cannot. Okay, sometimes even their biology is different. Okay. Like they, um, and it's not like they are another, uh, it's not like they're another species. They are humans just like everyone, but people have different words for these sorts of people, right? Some people would say, okay, they're more evolved or they're divine beings, you know, um, or they're chosen, right? Like the chosen ones. There's different, uh, I guess, conspiracies, theories, myths about people like this, but they're just, they are more high ranking. They're, they're more evolved, okay? And there's some things that they can do that the average person cannot do, um, especially when it comes to things like, like, like their biology. Some of them, they may even like heal. Maybe they heal quicker than the average person. Um, they just, you know, some of them, they come from a strong bloodline, you know, some of them. Um, and then when it comes to like their intellects, right? These are people who are like geniuses. They're very sharp. Something that would take the average person years to learn. They could probably learn it in a few months, right? Um, they can probably figure things out without even having to really, you know, sit there and study for months and months and months it's just already innate in them it's like it's already within their dna to know how to do certain things oh my gosh these are the sorts of people where they are multifaceted and didn't i use that word like these sorts of people they don't just have one trait like these are people who can be anything like Scientists, business owner, chef, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They have various crafts. They're not just good at one thing. These are people who are very, like the empress is someone who's known to be very creative and artistic. So they have more than one specialty or field, you know, or expertise. But there's something that's like encoded in these people. Um, and it's on a spiritual level. I don't even want to use the word encoded, but it's something with like the way that they were created where they just know things, they know how things work. And I feel like it's because I feel like spiritually, these are God's chosen ones. So in a way, like if you think about God, the creator, right? Like God created the universe. He is not to be limited right like god is not just one thing okay um you can't fit him in just one category or even in just one text or even a religious text he's more like he's he's greater than the universe right so the creator so imagine his people are also creators as well these are people who create they build they engineer they innovate they're brilliant, they are healers, they work miracles, like they do, it's almost like they are God-like, you know, because of the, 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 the spirit of God that is within them. So in a way, maybe some, some people may even say, like different theories may even say these are gods and goddesses, you know what I'm saying? Because in a way, God blessed them with his spirit. So they just know how to do certain things. It's like a code or something. Like these people, there's something very magical and mystical about these people, but it really just stems down to when you carry the spirit of God, the creator, you are able to do big creator things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he, like God will share his, his creations with you and his, his, his ideas and his brilliance with his people. Like that's what's happening. These people are God-like because they carry the spirit of God. So 
in a way, these people are very magnificent. And many of them, they do tend to be creators themselves where they they can produce things, they can grow things, they can manifest things, they can build and engineer things. They're artistic and creative and they have more than just one expertise or field or specialty because they cannot be refined, they cannot be limited, they cannot be, you know, put in one box. They are godlike. You know what I'm saying? Just like how it's like God shared himself with these people. So it's like, it just kind of balls down to what the Bible says, that there is God within all of us. And you can activate. First of all, in order, in order for something to be activated, you have to access it, right? How do you access the God within you? By resonating with God, by growing with God and living your life, you know, in a godly way and taking the godly path. Like there's something, these are people who are closely connected to God because of the way they live their life. And so they have access to God. And in a way, that's how they activate the God within them. Oh my gosh. I feel like I just like put some sort of puzzle together. That's just what it boils down to. I feel like there may be many theories and conspiracies about people like this, but it just comes down to these are God-like people because they carry the spirit of God. And how can one carry the spirit of God is by living your life the way God wants you to live your life, right? Following the things of God, that's just what it is. It draws him closer to you. And you get access to certain things that the average person doesn't. These people are rulers these people, whoa. These people are like God-like, but here on earth. They're not the God, the source, no. But in a way, they have a lot of... Okay, we're going to continue this in the extended, okay? All right, bye everyone. We're going to continue this in the extended because my mind is like, <laughs> like there's, okay, okay. We're going to continue in the extended. The link to the extended is going to be in the description box. Um, yeah, okay, take care everyone. Many blessings to you. See you in the extended.